morning, let's pray the Lord, show oh God. I want to speak to you from the very simple thing, the power of the touch. Amen. The power of the touch. The scripture says Jesus took him and healed him and sent him away. Pray with me, great God, we thank you for this awesome opportunity that we have to preach and proclaim the word. We pray, God, that you will send revelation over this your man's servant. God, we recognize that no praying, praising, or preaching is possible without your anointing. So we ask you that you send preaching power over this your man's servant. With God, the anointing that you will take me as will do me with the telephone booth is done. The clock can't turn me into a superman preacher. In Jesus' mighty, majestic, and holy name, we pray. We say amen. amen. But there are some of us. 
us that have spiritual privacy, meaning that we are unable to release and we only retain fluids of attitudes and peer pressure and upset and disappointment and depression. But Jesus is in the business of releasing you from your ability to retain things in your body. Not only do we have the Savior of souls, not only do we have a saint that has now been sacked where the Savior is now sitting, but we also have, Shanae, um, some individuals who are a part of the system. We have some preachers that are sitting at the table with Jesus that are not concerned about healing the sick. But rather we have a group of saints who systematically are a part of a system, Elena, that wants to keep people oppressed. I don't know who I'm talking to, but your business is not the business always of seeing people set free, but rather you are satisfied with just seeing folk in a place where they can sit. Uh, let me rephrase that. In other words, your business as a believer is that you really don't get excited about what God wants to do in other people, but you want to know how will it get fixed, what's actually wrong with them, how did they get in that condition, and why are they bothering me? But what I've discovered is that if you are going to accept the call that God has on your life, you cannot be concerned of the who, what, why, and when in the life of people. Ah, Jesus is not concerned about how you ended up in this condition, but he is concerned about seeing you come out. I wish somebody would hear that you cannot be concerned on why people do what they do sitting next to you. But your prayer should be, God do it for me. And that's what I love about the Christian kingdom. That our concern and agenda has to shift if we're going to see transformation in the life of people. You cannot be bogged down with other people's burdens while they are trying to be delivered. I discover that once people end up in church, you cannot bother them while they are in process of removing their problem. But you, you, the believer, sometimes can add pain to the problem you want to know why they're here, just celebrate that God allowed him to stop by so that he can bless them. Ah, there's, a group here. Ah, there's a fourth group here in the text. You don't see them, but I know they're here. They're called Sabbath Saints. Sabbath Saints are individuals who are excited when they receive visitors. Sabbath Saints are individuals who are appreciative for the word coming across the pulpit so that life and life issues can take an effect in their life. Sabbath saints are glad when they say unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Sabbath saints rejoice and celebrate when it's time to give because they recognize that it is more blessed to give than to receive. Sabbath saints celebrate when somebody goes to the altar because they know that their deliverance is about to show up. Sabbath saints just start giving God glory because when they think of what God has done to them, their soul starts to cry out, hallelujah, for everything that God has brought them through. Sabbath saints are just glad that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 
Uh, this morning, now, uh, Jesus has been invited to, to preach at this particular church. And there was something said that struck a chord in the life of the Pharisee that engaged them to ask Jesus to dinner. Uh, guess who's coming to dinner? They invite Christ to have a meal and share a moment in the life of their ministry. But Jesus, knowing all, is not surprised, Angie, when individuals invite Christ to dinner to ultimately not to investigate, but rather interrogate the life of what he is about. You've got to watch out for individuals who want to invite you to a place to just question you about your purpose and your plans and the calling on your life because they're not interested in seeing you progress, but rather they just want to know the secret to your success. They think that there's something behind what you're doing, and if they can tap into it, they can claim it for themselves. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the problem with us, Brother Vega, is that we spend too much time with meals with people who are not in the business of investing in their life. But every time you sit down with them, they want to know, how can I be like you? I got to this place by prayer and fasting and worshiping and praising. There is no secret to what God can do. What he's done for me, he can show his name. Jesus finds himself at the table. And in the process of this, he, he is fully aware of what the preachers are trying to do. In the midst of the meal, there is someone that has been dropped in with the, with the medical condition of dropsy. There's someone who just happens to show up at the table where the Lord is, who is living with an unlivable condition. Uh, from the outset, I was perturbed because I could not understand why in the world would they want to mess the master's meal up with disturbing him with somebody in distress. But further exegetical research helps us to discover that this man was planted by the preachers. And once I discovered that, that he was planted in offered preaching proclamation, there are some of us in this place that have to give God the glory because the enemy just sets you up. The enemy puts you in a place to where you can have a first-hand encounter with heavenly help. I think I just said something. Even with my condition, the enemy has been used to put me in right front center with Jesus the Christ who has the power to heal me. You ought to stop complaining right now because God is allowing the enemy to put you front and center so that you can have direct contact with Jesus himself. Watch this, baby, watch this. It's not a lot here from the outset, but, but further investigation helps us to see that Jesus recognizes uh, uh, what they are trying to do. In the process of this, Charlotte, the scripture says that Jesus identifying that the enemy was up to no good. He decides to take the brother to himself. From the outset, I said, Spirit, there's no preaching in just taking the brother. And the Spirit says, no, look at it. The actual 
actual word here for touch in the Greek, Mother Flowers, is squeeze. I said, why in the world would Jesus squeeze the brother if he had dropsy? Well, further medical work helps us to see that people who suffer from dropsy, one of the cures or one of the things, the remedies that is used for this disease is a squeeze stocking. And what the squeeze does is it moves the fluid up the body so that it can flow through the heart and the unclean blood can be refreshed and renewed so healing can take place. I said, oh my God, Jesus squeezes the brother because he's suffering from retention of fluids in his body. And the fluid now needs to move so that it can be cleansed through the heart and oxygen can begin the healing. There are some of us in here this morning that you need to be squeezed so that the Jesus send him away 
if the healing took place in front of the people that were questioning his power in the first place. Let me tell you why Jesus does it. Jesus fully understood the medical makeup of dropsy. The disease itself, Staley, retains fluid. And by having him sent away, Jesus is suggesting that he's no longer able to retain issues at this table. So you gotta understand something about this guy. This guy who is suffering from the disease called dropsy is a member of this church. And Jesus is at the table with his pastor. And he's saying, listen, the reason why this man has these issues is because he's been retaining what you've been preaching. Because there are two or three people in the house with their neck. 